algorithm. They're going to get your program somehow, some way. You know, a big uh, briefcase full of money is one way that works. A gun to the head is another way that works, and any way in between. So if you really want to have a good steganographic system, then your security uh, needs to hide with the key and, uh, and not with the algorithm. That's called uh, Kirchhoff's principle, um, and that applies very well to steganography. Uh, many systems have failed. Probably the most uh, prominent is the CSS system for DVDs where the 17-year-old kid in the Netherlands cracked that code uh, with the Linux box. Um, I don't know who they hired to uh, write the original security. Obviously, it wasn't Purdue students, right? <laughs> wasn't Rose Holland students either. I don't know. I don't know who. In Japan? Oh, okay. Oh, they're the ones that came up with that scheme? Okay. All right. I'll be interested to hear that. <laughs> um, in any case, um, other uh, systems have failed with the security by obscurity uh, concept. Uh, we can use, you know, everybody thinks of steganography as hiding images, okay, which is true. Images are probably the most prevalently researched, but you can hide in audio, you can hide in video, you can hide in text, you can hide in executables. There's several published papers for hiding in the code of an executable. Uh, basically, just about any file type is possible to uh, come up with a hiding technique for. Some are better than others. I mean, a plain text file that you can open in Notepad, uh, there's not a lot you can do with it. Insert some spaces or tabs or something like that, uh, but you still can hide there. The primary goal of steganography is to hide data so that it can't be found even if one is looking for it. Uh, to my knowledge, no one's achieved that at a, at a perfect 100% uh, uh, level, uh, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. There is a perfectly secure crypto system. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. One time pad. That's right. The one time pad. If, if employed properly, it's perfectly secure, 100%. Um, so there are several goals of steganography, security being one of them. Can't find it by looking at it, can't find it with a computer. Okay, that's kind of two different types of security. And then uh, capacity. Steganography typically has a high capacity goal get as much data in there as possible without being noticed. And then uh, robustness, which is to be resistant to image manipulations or audio manipulations of some sort, contrast, brightness, shifting, cropping, that kind of stuff. Uh, steganography generally doesn't try very hard to be robust. That's, uh, that's what watermarking does. Uh, it's secure if it can't be detected, even if the, alg uh, the attacker knows your algorithm or even has your program. Okay? Otherwise, it's, it's not secure. And so you think, can it be seen or heard? Okay. Can it be detected statistically? There's a lot of research in, in that area. Does it leave signatures? And I don't mean statistical signatures, but signatures like uh, altering the quantization table in a JPEG file uh, for a certain uh, purpose, okay, which one of the techniques in the papers does. That's a signature. All you have to do is look and find the JPEG quantization table, look at that bit and say, oh, this bit's a, a one or this byte's a one and must be using this uh, steganography program. Several levels of failure, detection being the biggest, but extraction and destruction uh, are others as well. Okay? In some cases, you, you don't care if it's detected, uh, but you don't want it to be able to be extracted or destroyed. Now, clearly, you can take the file and delete it, and that will destroy it. But destroying it in such a way as to leave the cover file um, in a good shape. <coughs> Capacity, how much data can an image hold? There's a physical limit, uh, assuming you don't want the original cover file to change size. In some cases, the size may not matter too much, okay? um, or as long as it's close. You know, if you have a, a bitmap that's three or four megabytes, that's not unusual for a bitmap. If you have one that's 30 megabytes, well, you know, unless you're doing uh, some specialized work, that's kind of unusual. You wouldn't find too many floating around the Internet. Okay, so, so the idea is to try to maximize the amount of data for a particular cover file. And robustness, uh, I'm not going to read all these. You can look at them later if you like, but how well the file can hold up to manipulations. And there's a lot. You know, the graphical manipulations, uh, analog to digital conversion, digital analog conversion, such as scanning and printing. You know, you don't necessarily typically think of that as analog and digital conversion, but it is. Faxing something. You know, if you're trying to watermark something and protect it, and all you have to do is fax it to somebody else to destroy the watermark, well, then it's not much protection, right? Um, and then there's robustness, and that's achieved by redundant encoding. So there's going to be a trade-off between robustness and capacity because as we put more information in there redundantly to provide robustness, we lose 
uh, capacity that would otherwise be available for the hidden data. All right, some classifications. Uh, we have the substitution system. That's kind of the straightforward, least significant bit type technique. And we'll talk about that briefly, uh, along with BPCS is another substitution system. Transform domain techniques. Uh, that's where you actually hide kind of in the math of, uh, you know, compressed images for one, or compressed audio could be. I've got an example of that with JPEGs. Uh, spread spectrum, you spread your message out amongst the various frequencies in the file. Uh, statistical is kind of interesting. You alter some statistical characteristic of the cover file. Uh, a little bit more difficult to do. Uh, distortion techniques, not very highly researched. There's, there's a few out there because you require the original file, but you, you distort the, the cover file and then the receiver needs both the original file and the distorted file and compares them to get the message back out. And then cover generation methods, uh, also not highly researched, but use uh, some mathematical technique to generate a cover in such a way as to, uh, to convey a message. All right, least significant bits. Substitution, replace the information in the cover with the hidden data. Now, I've got a picture of a mandrel coming up, and, and this least significant bit, te uh, bit technique that I use for demonstration uh, is kind of a very simplified technique. Basically, it will take one image and hide it in another image, okay? Uh, really, you could generalize that and hide anything within an image, uh, typically, but for demo purposes, I found this is a good one to talk about. So, probably a lot of you know this already, but images are composed of pixels. Each pixel, uh, if it's a color image, may have a different color component. And so the 24-bit bitmap that has the 16 million plus colors that you've all heard about uh, has eight red, eight bits for blue, eight bits for green, okay? And so uh, with this color image, what we're going to do is we're going to take the top four bits off the image to be hidden and put those, substitute those for the lower four bits of the image to hide in. And then we'll produce our, our cover file and we'll look at that. Of course, you may think, wow, that's half the information. You know, four bits out of eight is half. Well, it is half the capacity, but most of the information is stored in the upper four bits, so you still have a good image, even with the lower four bits replaced with this other image. Of course, images with solid black grounds, like a solid black or solid white, are going to make a poorer cover file than uh, something like this uh, mandrel you're about to see. So here, I've got a Dalmatian hiding in uh, four bits of the mandrel. Okay? Okay, can you tell this time which one... Yeah, you're just guessing again. <laughs> yeah, I put it on the right. Maybe I should swap that up next time. So <laughs> uh, it is in the right, but it's not because you can tell by, by looking at it. All right, so here's the uh, Dalmatian. Now, this one I truly don't know if you can see. Can you tell uh, up there on the screen that the right image has the mandrel in there? Yeah, a little bit of red. Yeah, yeah, well, you're looking over there. That's, yeah. Yeah, you can see, if you look at it on a computer monitor, I don't know about that screen, but you can see a little bit of red there. Uh, so it's starting to bleed through, okay, uh, because you've got such a solid image here. So the Dalmatian doesn't make as good a cover file as the mandrel does. So, of course, in this case, we've used all four bits. If you use three bits or two bits or one bit, then you're not going to be able to see it, even in the Dalmatian. And there's an example for that. So with this very simple program, I allowed uh, it to vary between 1 and 7 bits. So it can take just one bit from the hidden data and put in the least significant bit of the cover and uh, up to 7. Okay, and we'll see a few pictures uh, with that. All right, so here's uh, Peppers and the mandrel. And I don't know, can you tell on that one, uh, Joel, with the, uh, with the mandrel, that the, can you see the peppers bleeding through? Yeah, I was going to say, if I can tell, it's hard to tell. If I see anything, it's a little bit of what would be the mandrel's nose in the green pepper, maybe a little bit. But if I didn't know it was there, I wouldn't see it. Right. So, so this is a case where if you were just receiving images, you didn't think anything, you didn't suspect anything, you probably wouldn't notice. But if you look at it close, uh, you can see that a uh, little bit of the peppers bleeds through. And this is with five bits replaced. All right. Now, clearly, with six and seven bits replaced, uh, you can see it uh, very easily. Uh, and also there's another effect that happens, and that is the mandrel starts to lose some detail. Because now, now that you replace six and seven bits, not only are you putting this other image there, but you're taking away the detail information of the mandrel, so it starts to look more and more like a cartoon as opposed to an actual uh, picture. Now, of course, with the Dalmatian, um, I tried it with three bits of the peppers in there, and you really can't see anything. That's the one on the left. And then, of course, seven bits of peppers is, is very obvious uh, with the Dalmatian as well. 